May 23rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 5 from the New Testament. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of God's glory. Not only this, but we also rejoice in sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person perhaps someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, because we have now been declared righteous by his blood, we will be saved through him from God's wrath. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, since we have been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only this, but we also rejoice in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received this reconciliation. So then, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all people, because all sinned. For before the law was given, sin was in the world, but there is no accounting for sin when there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over those who did not sin in the same way that Adam who is a type of the coming one, transgressed. But the gracious gift is not like the transgression. For if the many died through the transgression of the one man, how much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, multiply to the many. And the gift is not like the one who sinned, for judgment resulting from the one transgression led to condemnation. But the gracious gift from the many failures led to justification. For if by the transgression of the one man death reigned through the one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as condemnation for all people came through one transgression, so too through the one righteous act came righteousness leading to life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of the one man many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of one man many will be made righteous. Now the law came in so that the transgression may increase, but where sin increased, grace multiplied all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace will reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, I so love reading these words. As our transgressions increased, where sin increased, your grace multiplied all the more. I suspect it's probably hard to keep up with all of our sinning. Um, but what a hope-filled passage that your grace always is ahead of our sinful nature. And then just as sin reigned in death, so also grace will reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I love the beginning of this when Paul is talking about not only should we rejoice in this incredible grace and righteousness and the hope of God's glory, oh, but you should also rejoice in sufferings. <laughs> Knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope doesn't disappoint. So as we are put through the trials of life, we are actually called to rejoice in the middle of them. How amazing is that? And how many of us actually do that? I'm starting to get to the point where when things start to not go the way I think that they should, even though my first reaction, unfortunately, is still very human and I get very discouraged and frustrated. 
it soon starts to turn around quicker than it used to, thank goodness. Then I'm praying to you to show me what it is I need to learn, to show me what this suffering is about, to show me what I need to change, fine tune, remove, add. Because then I get really excited because I know all of the trials that we go through are simply getting us so that we're closer and closer to the perfection of your son, Jesus Christ. Wow, it's just amazing. God, I just pray that everybody listening today, and I know they're all going through trials. I know they're all suffering on all different levels through all different situations. That they'll remember, one, you're in control of everything. (laughs) You know what they're going through right now. You haven't abandoned them. You're actually right there with them. But there is some point to what is happening. And we may get to learn about it in this lifetime, and we may not. But number one, you're sovereign over everything. You're in control over everything. And do we need to go back to this that even though we did not deserve forgiveness, we did not deserve righteousness, (laughs) that you loved us so much that you were willing to find a sacrifice for us, a perfect sacrifice for us to intercede on our behalf. Holy cow, if you love us that much, that you're willing to find a perfect specimen who happens to be your son to die for us, then why in the world wouldn't you be there right along with us as we went through our sufferings? To think opposite that doesn't even make sense considering your character and what we know of you throughout the Bible. So God, I pray for joy and rejoicing of the people who are going through whatever it is they're going through. I ask that you show them what they need to learn in their suffering. They or other people around them. I ask that you guide their steps. That as long as they need to be in that particular season. That they understand that you have perfect timing. That you're not torturing them by keeping them in that season. That they're actually torturing themselves if they only see it as suffering. And don't understand the blessings that will come out of it. God, I do thank you for all of the hard times, the suffering, the painful times, the really hard lessons that I've learned. Because all of it has just allowed me to have a deeper, more amazing relationship with you. And because of it, I'm allowed to go out and do discipleship work and help other people. I still screw up on a minute by minute basis. But now there's rejoicing during the suffering. And now there's endurance. And there's definitely hope. Thank you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.